Hello, welcome back to the Archeria DX7V tutorial. Today we're having a look at envelopes and level scaling, these couple of tabs at the bottom of the overview page. Let's have a talk about envelopes first. Now the easiest way to describe an envelope is something that has a one-time effect on a sound. It doesn't actually work as a definition for the DX7 because we can actually loop envelopes. But just for today, let's talk about them in the context of something that has a beginning, a middle and an end. Down below we can see this um, square shape and at the moment it's describing what's going to happen to the level of operator 1. When I press a key we hear a sound and you see a little marker move across this top line. That's describing a journey through time that's telling you how loud this sound is going to be. The S here stands for sustain. That's what happens when it reaches the end of its journey. And it's going to stick on that sustain point until I let go of the key. And you, you saw it very quickly travel down this line, which is the release curve. At the moment, obviously, it's a straight line. But we can have a far more complex release um, phase by clicking anywhere in this window. And we can create a multi-phase, multi-step release process and now when I release the key we have a longer release phase and we could actually make the volume of the sound go back up you see I can pick up any of these nodes and move them around and now when I let go it'll get quieter and then suddenly get louder again before it fades out to nothing we've also got these little arrow markers in between the nodes and they allow us to draw curves now the curves that we're allowed to draw have a minimum and maximum extent of the nodes to their immediate left and right. So if I have two nodes at the same level, like this node here and the sustain node, this arrow won't actually go anywhere. I can't, I'm, I'm dragging it now with my mouse, but you're not seeing anything change on the screen because both the points to the left and right are at the same level. But that allows us to have nice smooth transitions between these nodes. And now when I press the key now, it's going to get quieter until it reaches the sustain point at which point it sticks. And then when I let go, it's actually going to get louder before it fades out to nothing. Now we can have up to 16 different nodes on this envelope, any number of them before or after the release point. And you can see that every time I click somewhere in the screen, it's changing and then eventually it reaches the limit and we're left with 16 nodes in our envelope. If I right click on any of these nodes, it deletes them. And then as you saw earlier, I can pick them up and drag them around. If I've got curves on the nodes that I'm dragging, then they will be constrained within the motion uh, of, the, of the node as I drag it around. But you can see it's all pretty intuitive. And so now this curve, has a little bit of tremolo built into the sound and I let go of that thing and it's still carrying on because I've now set an end point above zero. So this final node here determines the resting volume, resting amplitude or level of the sound. Now I'm kind of tripping over myself with talking about amplitudes and levels and volumes but I'm used to viewing envelopes in terms of amplitude and so that's my natural go-to term but technically speaking I should really be talking in terms of levels. Okay enough with the grammar police let's get on with it. So I'm going to delete a few of these nodes to make it a little bit simpler to see what's going on and I'm going to select this node. You can see on the right hand side it's highlighted some of the values. I can click in any of those boxes and drag up or down with my mouse and adjust the values from in here. And you can see slope is where I edit the curve. You can also see if I click this end node and drag it off to the right, then the, uh, the scale above changes dynamically. And now I can only see a tiny part of the overall curve. If I head up into the ruler, it changes into a hand and now I can move to the left or right. But it's going to take me a while with these tiny little drags to get all the way back to the beginning. If I drag in the scale and then scroll up and down, move up and down with my mouse, I can change the scale that way. 
and if I double click in the ruler it zooms out so that I can see the entire curve and you can see here's my Pluto <laughs> kind of you know in the middle of nowhere and then I can drag it back to meet its friends double click in the ruler again and it rescales so it's a pretty intuitive interface once you figure out that the ruler is key because it can be you can make the mistake of clicking in the interface itself in an attempt to drag back to the left and you've inadvertently just made a new node that you didn't intend to do so just bear in mind you've got two different interface points here and they do different things so if I want to bring that one back to some kind of sense I can change click in the time box type the number five and then that's another way to manually override my value double click and I've reset my scale so about five minutes of messing around with this thing gets you to completely intuitively understand what you're doing it's a, it's a quite a nice interface actually just don't inadvertently left click because you're going to make nodes and then right click to delete your mistakes now all of that is talking about envelopes as simple volume controls everything that i was doing there was acting on operator one and it was acting as a volume control and you can hear it mirroring those changes but these envelopes don't just represent changes in volume like i say we really should be thinking about them as a, a level based concept because if i throw all that away and get us back to our simple default envelope Let's have a look at operator two instead, which at the moment is muted. So I'm going to increase the level. And as we saw in earlier episodes, now we've got that far more complex shape where operator two is modulating um, operator one, which is acting as a carrier. But as you can see, operator two has its own envelope. Now what's going to happen when I change operator two's envelope? Because we're still dealing with levels We've just changed the output level of operator two. What's that gonna sound like when operator two is behaving as a modulator? Let's find out. Something entirely unexpected. We're having a tonal effect on the sound now. This isn't an amplitude change anymore. It's a level change to a modulator. I'm gonna bring this sustain level back up. A Little bit confusing if two nodes are sat over the top of each other, but there we are. Here's our oscilloscope view of operator two operating at full tilt. So it's outputting at maximum level and it's acting as a modulator on operator one. If I turn the level of operator two all the way down, we're back to our simple sine wave. So that's what happens when you've got no level. So if I change the shape of operator two to go from maximum level to minimum level, we're morphing between those two modulation levels and as we just heard they they have a different effect on the output sound we go from a very complex wave to a very simple sine wave and that's what's happening we can see in the oscilloscope over the course of this three quarters of a second i'll just make it a little bit longer we morph from the complex shape to the simple one. But we've got a, a fully featured 16 node envelope to play with here. And so we can start getting far more exotic with what's gonna happen to the sound over that period of time. And now suddenly we've got something really interesting going on. So we make lots and lots of nodes and start getting kind of carried away with our, oh, I've reached my limit. There we go, let's see what that sounds like. Zoom out to see the whole thing. And here's my sustain level, I'm gonna let go. We're not gonna actually hear any of this because operator one is already silent. We've got no release phase on the carrier. Let's give it one. I've got no idea why I've got two sustain nodes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. So a bit of random node clicking and deleting and my second sustain node has gone away. I think that's an interface bug. Let's not worry too much about it. 
But what we've got now basically is a release phase, some stuff going on after the sustain level. So now we've got craziness before I release the key. And then we get to hear that little bit. If I pull this in to make it a little bit more sensible. Just get that little, little bit of extra action. There we go, after I release the key. So obviously each one of these and envelopes being completely independent lets you sculpt the shape of that operator, but it's always existing in the context of the bigger picture. If operator two is doing crazy stuff with its envelopes, but the carrier has disappeared and is no longer interested in what's going on, then you don't have the opportunity to hear any of that stuff. Let's throw all that away, get back to our default position again. And now let's have a look at level scaling. So this is basically talking about the, the um, relative amplitude of different notes on the keyboard. That's what level scaling is all about. It's about mapping across the keyboard. And you can see we've got a break point, which is the center node, center point here, around which our scaling operates. So if I set it to C2, for the purpose of demonstration, press C2 on my keyboard, that's now our middle point. Now underneath the breakpoint, we've got curve and depth. Curve describes these various shapes. There are four different um, alt alternative shapes for uh, to the left of the breakpoint and to the right. So if I click in this left-hand curve box and drag up, you can see it change shape. So I've now gone to a positive linear graph up here. And if I do the same on the right hand side, change to a positive linear graph as well. C2 is now going to be the quietest note on the keyboard and the notes to the left and right of it are going to be um, relatively louder. And you have to bear in mind that all of this is in the context of the operator's level. If my operator level is set to maximum, then you can't go beyond maximum. There's nothing beyond one. An additional complication is that both of these um, curves, the left and right curves, have depths. Let's increase the depth to maximum for both of them. And first of all, I'll just press a C2. So that's nice and simple. And you can see in the oscilloscope, the relative level, it doesn't particularly matter how loud it is, but it's all relative. Now I'll press keys going up the keyboard. They're all the same level. If I turn the level of operator one down, now C2 is completely silent. So the center point here, zero, is silent. And we're gonna have a linear progression. It takes a while to actually kick in. As I scroll up the keyboard, eventually, there we go, the keys start getting louder. My keys, keyboard's run out of keys, so I'll give myself an extra couple of octaves. I get louder and louder and louder. So I'll bring a little bit of my operator level back in to make it a little bit more sensible. So at this relative operator level, I've just found my C2, which is so quiet it's not registering on the tuner. If I go up an octave, there's C3 getting louder, and C4 louder still. So it's all about the relative level of all of the different keys on the keyboard. Now all of that's in DX7 mode, but we can switch to modern mode and give ourselves exactly the same envelope based um, graph that we had earlier when we were looking at envelopes. So now if I click a note and you can see as I drag the node left and right, it's changing the, um, the displayed note. So if I find C2 and take that up to maximum and then create new nodes on either side, now we're going to have a center point around, let me find C2 again, I'm messing around with all my octaves. There we go, there's C2 at a given level. And the notes to either side of it are going to get progressively quieter very quickly. And we descend to silence, and there's C2. 
and we, again we disappear to silence. Now I'm not completely convinced that the implementation of this thing is absolutely perfect. I'm, plus, I'm pressing a, um, an A1 there, the tuner tells us, and we've not seen any reduction in level, not entirely sure why. But the concept kind of works. So you can basically set um, zones of the keyboard that work and all of the other zones have complete silence. So there's my C2 and very quickly you can see me pressing the notes on the virtual keyboard and they're all absolutely silent. And then it comes back and very soon we descend to silence again. So you can actually constrain the keyboard quite nicely. Now that's all very well and good for um, amplitude, for, for volume, but if we apply that concept to an operator, we're gonna get a completely different effect. If I copy operator one up into operator two, now operator two has exactly the same level scaling, and I'll just get rid of all of this nonsense for operator one. Get us back to a completely stable playing field. So now I'm not doing anything with the level, I'm modulating operator two's level scaling output. So let's find our C2. Just increase the level there. In fact, I'm gonna maximize the setting on operator two as well. So here's our complex wave, operator two modulating operator one. But as soon as I go outside of my tiny little level scaling zone, I'm gonna get a pure sine wave again. Press the highest note on my keyboard. What is it? It's a C5 and it's a sine wave. All of these notes are sine waves. Eventually, when I get into the level scaling zone, We're through the zone on the other side, we're back to a sine wave again. All the same principles apply to the envelope nodes, select the node, and then you can change your scaling from within. Oh, I just clicked on the point level there, and I can actually scroll through the points, choose which one I want to edit, and then edit it from inside my text boxes. So that's our basic introduction to envelopes and level scaling. It already has the capacity to, to kind of overwhelm us. But as we'll see in the next episode, when we go on to look at the dedicated envelopes tab, there's a hell of a lot more functionality than that to go at. But with that like, basic understanding um, in our toolbox, now hopefully we should be able to understand some of the more advanced concepts and we'll deal with that in the next episode. Thanks very much for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed it and I'll see you then.